you would require blood cultures, you would require immune function tests, you would require cultures from septic embolocytes and ECG and echo, multi-size contrast CT in case your patient has developed neural manifestations and a chest x -ray. So now, then we talk about, you're talking about blood cultures, you know, what is the actual instance of blood culture negative endocarditis? Now, when we talk in terms of Indian data, blood culture negative endocarditis is to the tune of 48 to 50 percent, whereas blood culture is sterile in 31 percent as per Western data. In recently published data, what they have observed is rough, roughly up to one third of these cases, you know, one third or 16.7, one third or something like 33.3 percent of the cases, uh, you get a culture negativity in published data from India. Common causes for this would include antibiotic therapy before actually blood cultures are put on. Then you have uh, endocarditis secondary to fastidious or atypical organisms which do not grow in routine culture media. <coughs> and you have fungal or viral endocarditis. Excuse me. Now these are the certain lab manifestations which you can see on further testing. You can get anemia in these patients up to the tune of 70 to 90 percent. Leukocytosis 20 to 30 percent. These patients may have microscopic hematuria on urine routine. You can get elevated ESR in more than 90%. You can get a positive rheumatoid factor in 50%. You can get circulating immune complexes in 65 to 100%. And you can get decreased serum complement level in 5 to 40% of these patients. Now, whenever we talk in terms of diagnosing an infective endocarditis patient, there's something called as Duke's criteria, there's something called as modified Duke's criteria. And there are certain modifications which we need to, which we may need to understand. So when we talk in terms of Duke's criteria, sensitivity is approximately 76% in Western literature. The major deficiency is inability to diagnose blood culture negative endocarditis as far as Duke's criteria is concerned. And when we talk in terms of modified Duke's, they have added certain things which includes Q fever serology testing, staph bacteremia and the absence of other primary focus as a major criteria, and serological evidence of other organisms consistent with endocarditis as a minor criteria. So modified dude criteria would include a positive blood culture, typical microorganism for infective endocarditis from two separate blood cultures. It could be viridans, it could be streptococcus bovis, ASEC group of organisms. Staph aureus or community acquired enterococci in the absence of a primary focus, or persistently positive blood culture, which is defined as recovery of a microorganism consistent with infective endocarditis from blood cultures which have been drawn more than 12 hours apart. All of three or a majority of four or more separate blood cultures with first and last drawn at least one hour apart. And a single positive blood culture for coxella vernetai of phase one IgG antibody. One is to 800. Now, when we talk in terms of how to find any evidence of endocardial involvement, you get a positive echocardiogram, wherein you can document an oscillating intercardiac mass on the valve or supporting structures, or in the path of devergated jets or in implanted material, in the absence of an alternative anatomic explanation, or an abscess, or a new partial dehiscence of prosthetic valve, or a new onset valvular regurgitation. Now, when you talk about new onset valvular regurgitation, simply an increase or change in pre existing murmur is not sufficient. The minor criteria would include predisposition for predisposing heart condition or injectable drug use, fever, which is persistently more than or equal to 100.4 degree Fahrenheit, you can get vascular phenomena in the form of major arterial emboli, septic pulmonary infarcts, mycotic aneurysms intracranial hemorrhage, conjunctival hemorrhages, and genuine lesions. You can get immunological phenomenon in the form of glomerulonephritis, oscillus nodes, torch spots, and a positive rheumatoid factor test. You can get microbiological blood culture, meeting the criteria as noted previously, or you can get a serologic evidence of active infection with an organism which is consistent with endocarditis. So at the end of the entire, uh, you know, uh, whole thing, which um, I don't think you will be able to remember without reinforcement, what would be required would be either two major criteria or one major and three minor criteria or all the five minor criteria to allow a clinical diagnosis of definitive endocarditis. What are the other modifications? 
This is a 2015 modification from European Society of Cardiology. And now these are the modified criteria. So major criteria include blood cultures which are positive or from infective endocarditis from, from two separate blood cultures. You have got microorganisms which are consistent with infective endocarditis from persistently positive blood cultures. And that would include more than or equal to two positive blood cultures of blood samples which are drawn more than 12 hours apart or all of three or a majority of more than or equal to four separate cultures of blood with the first and last samples drawn at least more than or equal to one hour apart. Or you can talk about single positive blood culture for coxilla burnetai or phase one IgG antibody titer, which is more than one to eight. As far as imaging positive are concerned, echocardiogram is positive for infective endocarditis, vegetation, abscess, pseudoaneurysm, intercardiac fistula, valvular perforation or aneurysm, new partial disease or you can find an abnormal activity around the site of prosthetic valve implantation which is detected by a PET CT only, only if the prosthesis was implanted for more than three months or radio-labeled leukocytes by using SPECT or CT. Definitive para lesions on cardiac CT are again one of the imaging positive criteria for diagnosis of infective endocarditis. So what were the modified criteria for the diagnosis of infective endocarditis? These are the minor criteria, predisposition such as predisposing heart condition or injective drug use, fever which is defined as a temperature which is more than or equal to 30 degrees centigrade, vascular phenomenon including those detected only by imaging, major arterial emboli, septic embolic, septic coronary infarcts, infectious mycotic aneurysm, intracranial hemorrhage, conjunctival hemorrhages and Janeway spots. New immunological phenomena such as glomerulonephritis, osseous nodes, sore spots, and rheumatoid factors. Different microbiological evidence in the form of a positive blood culture, but does not meet a major criterion as noted above, or serological evidence of acute active infection with organism which is consistent with infective endocarditis. Now, I do uh, agree that this can be very confusing when you are going to sit down and discuss this and talk about it. So, my suggestion to you would be probably to go back. Go back on the net, go back to your books and look at the criteria. Probably going through them repeatedly would help you into remembering them faster. Now, this is the algorithm for diagnosis of infective endocarditis. You've got a clinical suspicion, you've got a modified due criteria, 